Well, we are rolling into the third full day of planting corn for 2022. It is May 12th, and this is the day we started planting corn uh, here last year. The planter's been working pretty good. I've had a couple of small issues, just some connection issues with the load cell, the, the device that is on the row unit that reads the uh, downforce. I've had a couple of issues with those, just a plug connection is all. But other than that, everything is working pretty good. I uh, have the row cleaners raised up for the most part. They're just kind of scratching the surface. I can roll into my display here and I can uh, meter those by just touching a few of these toggles here. There's three choices, uh, three preset choices that you can choose from to adjust those row cleaners. Then, of course, you can go in and you can manually manipulate how much pressure you want uh, on them to either raise them or lower them. Now, uh, the one problem I had with this unit, the only real problem, and it's really not a problem, is trying to get used to uh, Seed Star 4 on the 4640 display. There is a lot of information that is piped into this display and it gives you an actual Seed Star uh, page that you can choose from, but in the um, layout manager, you are able to fill in these other fields here on the display with various functions. So you can more or less custom design that or custom figure that uh, page for however you want things uh, set up and it's a little different than what I'm used to but I've got it just about set the way I want it. I've got fertilizer up here and I'm watching the downforce on this. That's how this page is set up. Uh, this one is more or less uh, just a slightly different page. Um, I got my mapping here so I can watch my guidance tracks and and whatever like that but there's a lot of information <laughs> that can come into that display I run this one iPad here with notes on it I can roll into here and look at uh, what varieties that we have left at the at the hay barn there where we store our seed corn and uh, we're running field view up on this other display a real nice feature with this 4640 display is the uh, boundary track that you can use to use for a guidance track around the outside of the field. I talked about that some here uh, last year and that is uh, real handy. So I'm going to go into my guidance, go into my track here roadside 2022 and a guidance line is up on the screen there and yeah there we go so i don't know if i had mentioned it or not but this is the field that andrew offset dissed i don't know if you can recognize it or not but we do have a couple of islands down in the middle of it, you're probably wondering, you know, why don't you just get rid of that tree? Well, that tree is on a rock island and uh, there really isn't anything that we can farm as far as where that tree is. What we'd like to do someday is dig all that rock out of there and uh, level it some and then maybe we would farm, be able to farm it, but it's, it's real steep right there too. So with the guidance tracks uh, running around the boundary of the field, that's real handy. And I guess we'll just keep on keeping on here. As far as how things are greening up this year, they seem to be greening up a lot faster at a earlier time frame 
then uh, what I remember things like last year the the hay fields are doing really well we've got a lot of leaves on the trees now and uh, it looks really nice the guys are disking over on the next farm over on the other side of the valley there um, they're actually waiting for some fertilizer to be applied and that's where we're going to move to next my father's right across the road with a six row planter and he is just about done with that field on the other side of the road we've had real good luck with the um, seed tender I just dumped in the fifth box of seed here uh, last night now that seed tender is not the one I ordered this seed tender is has a uh, single compartment it holds 120 bushel however the seed tote that I have in it right now I only had uh, one tote of this one particular variety and um, it would have been handy to have had that two bin uh, tender that I ordered that way I could have put that one variety in the one bin and then I could have put as many as uh, two in the other one we generally would have a hard time planting through uh, two totes of seed with just the amount of acres acreage that we can uh, get through for the day I ended up filling the planter full here last night or getting the planter filled full with what seed I had in the tender and this planter holds 120 acres worth of seed so I'll have enough seed here to get through a majority of the day and then uh, between what I'm going to need to finish out today and what my father will actually plant here today that 40 uh, that 50 bushel that we have on the seed tender uh, should get us through the day and get us uh, empty by the end of the day so we'll just keep plugging away here conditions are perfect it's nice and dry uh, been rolling across these acres acres and we're making a lot of dust here so this is the one island here the first island in this field and then we've got another island beyond it and you can see it's just full of rock and on the lower side of it there's just there's about 50 feet of room down on the lower side and we can just barely get the planter around there it was a little tighter my father was over here with the excavator a couple of weeks ago and he ripped out the trees and whatever that were uh, on this island these uh, this island and that one down there were actually quite a bit bigger we've been chopping away at them at them and getting them uh, cleaned up a little bit and whatever it after you don't farm something for a while the trees all start growing up we've only owned this farm for 12 or 15 years and these islands were a lot bigger than this and um we're just trying to keep them pushed back but this island was well past well it was out there quite a ways so we'll join back up with you in a little while here well we're moving right along here i'm in the field that my father started with this morning so i've got everything on that side of the road there uh, done and uh, my father moved along moved on to another farm we started this farm with one particular variety of BMR silage a Bravant 14U 78SXE he ran out of corn had to go to a different variety so I didn't want to mix up the corn in this field so I'm finishing this one and he's moved along to the other farm this field here that he started in I put a guidance track along on my left hand side here and uh, once we get into the ground that he has planted I actually have to pick the make sure I pick the planter up 
right at the right time on this headland because my row shutoffs aren't going to know where got a little kid watching in the car there uh, my planter is not going to know what was planted in this field because we aren't able to share mapping information between the two planting tractors so we'll get into that in a second here line back up on my guidance track and then get the planter down we've got some spots where we have would have over planted into his headland but it is what it is so we're going to be on our next pass coming down through uh probably got to plant five rows maybe and what we'll have to do is we'll have to shut rows off on our planter as we get into planted ground now this is a 4640 display and my father he has a 2630 display we can't share information because you can't share information between the two different uh, displays so uh, we'll just have to do things that way once uh, once we make our next pass I'll be able to shut off rows as we go like I was saying now if you recall in the last video when uh, Andrew was plowing that field on the other side of the road with the offset disc I said he has to do that one with that because it's so stony and there isn't any stones on this side of the road and as you can see there's nothing here <laughs> isn't that odd this this farm here is stony south from Lyons Road south you get up on uh, top of that hill over in there and there's rock within four or five inches of the top of the ground so we'll just keep on keeping on here my father's on the other farm over in there and the guys are disking over there too and i don't know if you can see the dust or not but they're kicking up a lot of dust over there with the two discs and we'll be over there shortly once we get uh done with this field here so we'll join back up with you in a little while here if anything uh, progresses, we'll be sure, uh, sure to stop in with you, but you can see uh, how nice and dry and dusty it is. It'd be kind of nice to get through planting without getting the planter wet. So I've had, like I was talking earlier, I've had some issues with the connections for the load um, for the downforce uh, the downforce sensor the plug some of them uh i just have to play with them and i'll get the connection reading back they've got a zip tie wrapped around them and i think it's too tight and i think some of the vibration is letting that uh plug walk open a little bit so on a couple of them that i had trouble with i have cut the zip tie and i think that is going to help so right now I've got a couple of rows over planting. So I just take the display screen here and I can just start shutting rows off. I need to shut three rows off. Now we can shut rows off on that other planter, but you have to get out and flip the little dog on the, the little seed meter uh, clutch. Uh, on our other setup that we had on this planter, we could do the same thing we could we could shut rows off i need to shut another one off and another one now we're getting in the ground that is already planted pick the planter up i'll enable them all because i need to uh start shutting rows off on my right hand side so that is a handy feature that these uh precision type planters have <laughs> you just got to remember to turn it back on now so yeah but yeah other than that everything has been going good but um we have had some connection issues so there's the phone again so i'll join back up with you in a while here 
Well, we're actually into the following day here now. So it's day number four, our fourth uh, full day of planting corn for 2022. We moved over to the Cleverly Farm here this morning. And this particular field that I'm in right now is uh, 70 acres, just shy of 70 acres, actually. I'm planting on this side. My father's planting on uh, the other side of the field here. And I'm actually going to be pulling out of this field here in a few minutes. What we try to do is we try to utilize the row shutoffs that this planter has, being that that planter does not have row shutoffs. And when we get into the pie shaped areas and whatever we do, the pie shaped areas with this planter, and we let the other planter do the straight rows and we can cut down on wasting uh, seed and fertilizer by doing things that way. Now this field is shaped somewhat goofy here. This is the um, field view app that's on the iPad. You can kind of see the shape file of this field in the green. That is what I have already planted. Now my father's over on this side. He's going back and forth doing the straight rows. I'm just gonna finish up getting this little chunk done here and then I'm gonna start going back and forth on this end and then what I'm gonna do is pull out and go to the next field, get the headland started and we'll start uh, doing the goofy parts of that next field as well. Uh, the seed tender has been working out really well we are saving about 20 minutes on a large fill-up. Uh, last year, I timed myself a couple of times doing a full fill-up on this 16-row planter. And it would take me 45 minutes to fill up with 48 bags of seed and two tanks of fertilizer. On, with the seed tender, I can't load seed at the same time I load fertilizer, and I kind of thought that we would be somewhat in the same time frame, being that I would have to pull up to the seed tender and uh, get get things situated and whatever, but I felt it's just gonna be a little easier uh, doing it that way, opposed to handling all them bags. Well, it ended up taking me, it takes about 10 minutes to load with fertilizer, and it took me 12 to load with seed. So we're saving about 20 minutes conservatively here and it just makes things a lot easier uh, using the seed tender what I do now while I'm waiting for the fertilizer to load is I run around the planter with a grease gun it takes me about three fill ups to get all the way around the planter with a grease gun so we're kind of saving a little bit of time uh, doing multitasking while we're filling with fertilizer we're not just on our thumbs so I have been getting some questions here um, on you know why did we choose to put all this money into this planter why didn't we just buy a brand new one last year we actually ordered a brand new planter along with five or six uh, uh, of Casanova equipment's other customers and they uh, had all their Casanova had their orders canceled because John Deere had oversold. They sold out uh, the amount of planters that they wanted to build or were going to build. They sold out in a short amount of time. Being that we are in the environment that we're in, just coming out of COVID and dealing with uh, parts supply issues and whatever else like that, I think john deere ratcheted their numbers back so as to not uh get into a situation where uh maybe they weren't able to uh meet all the orders and fulfill uh the orders that got put in and then little did they know they ended up their workers ended up going on strike here oh in the in the fall we were supposed to get this um, uh, update kit for this planner. Uh, we were supposed to get it around the end of the year, and we actually didn't get it until 
um, the first part of March and we came in just under the wire as far as uh, getting this planner put together and we really lucked out we could have ran into some really um, we could have ran into some strange strange issues and I was worried about that from about the first of the year on as far as running into setup issues and whatever else like that and I missed my guidance line so what I'm doing now is I'm planting this end of the field here I'll get this planted like I said earlier here I'll end up moving up to another field and my father can stay going back and forth on the uh, straight rows so um, you know again like I was saying we could have ran into some issues with missing parts and software that maybe was not working with what was put on the planner and <laughs> everything worked it worked really well it worked just as good as a brand new planner fresh out of the factory uh would work you know you got you have some issues with hose clamps not being tight and maybe a hydraulic hose or something not being uh tightened down enough or or you know little connection issues with plugs and stuff like that on wire harnesses and i felt that this um startup of this planner went really well so getting back into uh getting back into the cost or getting back into talking about um why we chose to do the upgrade now opposed to waiting for next year or this year rather for a new planner this planner here is a 2015 we're running into the eighth season on this planner we have replaced seat opener discs a couple times already and it was due to have a bunch of iron put on it for this coming year anyways and we also had a couple other things that it was in need of that just kind of made sense to go along with the update kit now not everybody could get an update kit uh, for this year but anybody that had an order put in for a new planner that John Deere couldn't fulfill, fulfill the order for they were able to uh, purchase an upgrade kit now this frame of this corn planter is like brand new you know for the amount of hours that it gets used every year you're only talking a couple of hundred hours a year multiply that by seven uh, slash coming into eight it's only got like 1600 hours on it roughly so as far as the rest of the planter other than your uh consumable components that run in the dirt it's basically you know they've got a lot of life left in them and and john deere feels that coming up in the future here that you're going to see more and more guys doing the same thing uh that we did now this planner is roughly around two hundred and forty thousand dollars list price for a planner set up basically like this one but with the ccs tank and the hydraulic uh independent row hydraulic uh down force and the fertilizer and and whatever else like that that's on it we ended up paying eighty two thousand dollars for this upgrade kit and it was about fifty thousand dollars cheaper than even with the upgrade kit trading in uh, what we had towards a new one now we didn't have a new uh, 16 row planner ordered we actually had a 12 row planner ordered and I thought that we could kind of get through this year with this planner the way it is and maybe if we fell into a bunch of money <laughs> we'd be able to trade this planner off for a new one come next year but um that didn't happen so now we have basically a new planner however i am i'm stuck with 
the three bushel boxes. And the reason why we bought three bushel boxes back when we did was we were dealing with bags. Just like a lot of guys in my area, everybody's using bags. And, um, you know, getting a seat tender was just that one other expense. So now that we have the seat tender, we can maybe order a planter with the uh, actual seed grain tank on it. It's going to make putting fertilizer down a little interesting as far as doing the in furrow fertilizer. We're going to have to either put those, put some small tanks out on the wing or um, carry a tank on the tractor. I really don't want to put a tank on the tractor, but that's, that's an option. The other option, we only need a couple hundred gallons um, of storage if you will for the inferral product we're only putting on all you know, like four gallons to the acre of that so um, that 300 gallon tank that's on the back sometimes I only half fill that anyway so that'll kind of shed some light on some of the questions that we've had here throughout the past few videos of doing this upgrade kit I'm really glad that I did do what I did. I was a little worried, like I was saying, about uh, having issues with the startup. I said, you know, <laughs> it might just be that my father is going to be planting a lot of corn this year with that six row planter. I envisioned being in the, in the field with the planter tore apart having John Deere help me get it get things figured out I figured that we'd be monkeying around it with it for days on end and that six row would be doing circles around it so I guess that's gonna do it folks for this video I'm hoping that we get some rain here quickly uh, it is Friday the 13th May 13th and um, we're supposed to get some rain here saturday night and the sunday and uh that would be a blessing in disguise uh, we don't do our own spraying auburn ag does and they're actually uh, spraying what bit of corn that we've already planted uh, right now we do we plant all roundup ready oh i said a bad word we plant all roundup ready corn and um we end up uh, spraying pre-emerge. We spray all of our corn with a pre-emergent herbicide. Now, being that I said Roundup Ready, um, this video will probably get flagged for a little while and I'll have a real tough time uh, getting it uploaded because um, they'll probably have to sift through the video and make sure I'm not coming up with any propaganda, if you will associated with Roundup. Now I said it, what I, what I do, say, did I say Roundup three times or did I say Roundup four times? Maybe we're up to five times now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I guess that's gonna do it for this one, folks. I wanna thank you for watching and we will catch you at the next one.